So I guess you've come here because of that uh, thumbnail, which I guess would be <clears throat> over there somewhere still, or well, generally speaking, and you clicked on it. So I thank you very much from uh, the bottom of my heart. I'm very grateful that you've uh, at least clicked on the thumbnail. It's not going to be trash. I hope it isn't. So, you know, my production value isn't as great as other builders and video content creators, but I hope that managed to provide you with some concise, diligently put informative information that will help you. And in this case, we're doing a build. We're building a budget PC and it's going to see you through. See you through where? Maybe the next three months, six months, or however long you plan on keeping it, depending on what you also invest into it and how you go about that. What do I mean by this? I mean that you're probably, a lot of people currently are trying to save up for a new PC, a Primo PC, a awesomeness PC, awesomeness.com is not a website, so don't go there, but yeah, like Ryzen's unavailable, Intel's coming out, out around the corner, no GPUs are available, including your 3000 series, your Radeon series, you know, everyone wants to build a 5700X or 5600X or something thereabouts and get themselves the 3060Ti if they ever exist, let alone a 3070, 3080 or even 3090. Now, if you're saving up for something like this, I'm sure you've got some money already in the kitty. And because of this, we're going to take a little bit out of that kitty. It's going to drop the amount that you've got saved. But because of that current climate, if within the next three to six months you continue and you've saved almost enough, you can always sell those parts back onto the marketplace and not lose much at all in the transaction. Why? Because today we're essentially doing a build that'll cost you between two to 300, 350 max, I'd say 200 minimum US to Australian dollars. So it's gonna be one of those builds that we pick and choose our parts very wisely and carefully. Hopefully you've got a plan in place, you know, and this will help with the plan, you'll know what parts and what computers you already are saving up for and what parts you're waiting for. You might be on a waiting list already and have been for a couple of weeks. It may take another two, three, four, three months even for some parts to arrive. People have been waiting for GPUs for a long period of time now, especially in our Australian climate, but I know it's the case all around the world. So what we need to do is be savvy shoppers. We're going to consider things like investing in our power supplies now, if they're available, if need be. Investing in things like a case, if you so desire. Otherwise, we're going to have to go on the El Cheapo. It doesn't mean that a cheap case can't house your new PC as well. It's something to consider, especially with the case that we got our hands on as well. The parts, realistically speaking, that we're using today, I'm gonna to say the build was essentially total today, technically didn't come to the 230 to 290 figure that I'm going to be portraying to you in this light. Because in this light, what we essentially did was we got our CPU, our motherboard, our RAM and our GPU, which are all fairly decently priced in the marketplace parts that we can utilize for a temporary build. And the rest of the parts, I would recommend that you take out of your kitty per se as well and actually buy the parts now because those parts tend to be available currently. So your cases are available currently and your power su supplies are available now again. Um, not There's a lot missing, but they are available. If you're, if you're conscientious and you look around, you will be able to find the one, the type that you need, which is probably realistically like an 850 watt power supply if you're planning on powering a 3080 or higher. Now that would be overkill for our build today. 
So understand that's why it's not being equated in the cost because it's, it's going to be taken over to your Primo build. Okay, so this is the sort of equation we got ourselves in today. And I'm not good at math, so that's probably not the right term to use. But uh, I am good at building PCs and overclocking them. We're going to get an old chip essentially and we are going to overclock her. Ooh. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this chip per se and then get as much performance out for your bang for buck. And we're not going to be paying much for the chip to begin with. Uh, and because that's being said, we can at least take the risk. We can learn something. We can understand that perhaps our new Ryzen chips and our new Intel chips even if they're unlocked, perhaps just leave them for the time being until you realize and have a work on something that's not as expensive. Why would you overclock it at the beginning anyway? I, I never understand that, frankly. Maybe two, three, four, five years down the track, depending on how long you're planning on keeping your computer. Once you need that extra performance, then do so, you know? It's, it's a smarter option. Then you have the experience of a lot of other overclockers already doing so before, before you. And the information will be in the forefront and available, readily available online. Uh, rather than right now being a race and, and a secretive race for people to, uh, you know, have the status quo of being the best and not actually providing you the right information pertaining to how to overclock the chip specifically. Okay, sometimes it's the case a lot of the times, you know, you have to wait a little bit before it's before you get a free amount of information flowing regarding specific chips, especially if you decide to get a chip that's not as popular as some others and there are some nuances, some little uh, differences between them that have to be factored in. Okay, guys, without a moment's rest, uh, let's jump straight into the parts and I'll... It's going to be a sem somewhat a build guide as well for you. So I will be explaining a fair amount once we get through the explanation and stuff and we've got all the parts sort of sorted in that regards. Yeah, we'll start getting down into the build. We've got timestamps below. So have a look in the description itself. You will be able to, this will definitely be probably a long video for me at least. Edited wise, it'll be a lot more streamlined for you all and you'll get the luxury of the timestamps below at any stage you can skip back and forth in this build and and be satisfied that you know what the hell's going on and you're not getting too lost, okay? So I'm gonna do my best to show you exactly everything. I'm not used to the cameras having two cameras set up as well. So hello. So let's get started, eh? So where did the chip go? I was about to say, where the chips? I've got Doritos now. They've got these new... Oh my God, I can't think about chips. Please, no more chips. Okay. It's going to be a hot day, by the way. So I want to get through this as quickly as possible. We've got a couple of computers running in this uh, room currently. And the room warms up. The, the wall itself starts to bake. And if I'm not done within the next couple of hours, I don't want to be sweating on camera, frankly, right at the end. At the end, if I am, I guess it doesn't really matter too much because of the fact that you hang around, you probably, I probably deserve your respect and you deserve mine in that sense. I appreciate it. Thank you. And please hit the like and, and or subscribe to Robbie Tech. It's a free way to show your support. I wouldn't be able to have the motivation to do this sort of stuff if you guys weren't here uh, to listen and be essentially viewers, I guess, and get something out of it because it's, I don't know what the term is again, but I'm trying to give you something and I hope it doesn't fall on deaf ears. If it does, I'll just, you know, pretty much stop doing this, you know? So, okay, let's get started. What have we got here? What sort of chip have we got? Today, uh, we... I picked up an i7-950, so it's one of the uh, earlier generations. It's actually a legacy generation chip. So I'll, I'll show you guys on the camera over here. So it's a legacy generation chip, i7-950. I'll flip her over. She's, uh, ooh, look at all that gold. Oh, that's, that's nice. Look at all these little chiplet little thingos and 
I don't know what they are exactly, you know, in the substrate. What's going on here? There's two lines there. There's, you know, no, don't look at that. It's naked. It's naked. Don't look at it. All right. Uh, so this chip itself is from the Bloomfield era. It has a base clock of 3.6 or sometimes people like to say 7, depending on who's saying it, uh, gigahertz. It will boost to 3.33 gigahertz and it's on a four. It's a 45 nanometer chip. She's pretty interesting because uh, the cool thing is she's unlocked and we can overclock her more of that once we get to it. The chip itself draws 130 watts worth of power and came out in, so she's quite power hungry. It doesn't mean she's always going to be drawing that amount of power, I have to understand that. There's a way of also overclocking that, overclocking will tend to have it draw more power, but it has to realistically be under load, under idle conditions, and, and may only be drawing 20, 30, 40 watts, depending on what it might be. But these chips were notoriously power hungry as well, especially for their day. On a side note, minimum uh, voltage, minimum maximum voltages range from 0 0.800 volts to about 1.375 volts. And we'll talk about that scariness and that in part two of this build where we start to overclock the chip to get as much out of it as possible. You don't have to overclock it. It's not a it's not a necessary thing, but because this chip itself, in regards to how much we paid, it, it's not worth not overclocking it. It's at its end of its life cycle. So if we can get some extra performance out, it's well worth doing so, okay? I, I'm under the understanding that this chip has been well maintained and has some potential. So instead of the uh, 3.06 gigahertz base clock, we should be able to get it up on an overclock of up to say 4.2, 4.3 if we're lucky gigahertz on all cores. And this chip is a four core, eight threaded chip. So She's got enough power in her to be able to comfortably play some gamage for us and coupled with the right parts, uh, secondhand and right other parts that we'll need like a GPU and you know enough RAM and whatnot and potentially a cooler, we should be able to get some decent performance and playable gamage in games like Fortnite definitely Valorant, Apex Legends, things like that, Rainbow Six, so that you can muck around with your friends in the meantime and not fall out of a loop and keep you know practicing your gaming and whatnot um, and maybe have a PC, a second PC left over depending on how you play your cards as well. But I'll leave those fundamentals up to you exactly just so that this plan is formed and people implemented uh, you may get something for nothing, essentially, because once you go sell it back, you'll get your money back. You should, in theory, especially in this market. Okay, so so how are we going to run this chip itself? Uh, it's a 1366 socketed chip. And because of that, what we need is a motherboard that's applicable and that will have a socket that is LGA1366. It's an easy way of establishing at the very least. It's not always the case. You have to go a little bit further and just double check. But it's the easy way of knowing if it, the motherboard is compatible with the chip. Okay. So we've got ourselves a X58 Pro motherboard produced by MSI. It's got things like Dr. Moss. You know, it's got plenty of fan headers. Okay. It's got... Unfortunately, it hasn't got USB 3.0. There are boards that came out approximately a year after this that did have the USB 3.0 headers. This one does not, but it's got a reset switch here. It's got a power button switch here. It's got a clear CMOS switch. So that's really nice because you can use that for when we're overclocking. It's even got little tabs for overclocking, which I don't recommend you touch, frankly. So I'm being serious there. Um, it's got USB, uh, 
2.0 2.0 over here as well it's got uh, that's for your uh, front panel uh, headers in that sense and that's like for your power button and whatnot this one over here is for your HD audio coming in through the front there so your auxiliary connections and whatnot it is uh, PCIe Express 2.0 CFX, so slightly better than 2.0, and plenty of bandwidth it will have pertaining to uh, even if you manage to get yourself a, a, a 3070 or something like that. Just chuck it on this, and it'll still run. It'll run better than the card you have while you're waiting for your chip to f complete your build, if you get me. You know, so this is how we're sort of our mentality to be able to upgrade and have something in the meantime. Take a little bit from the kitty and you'll either sell it off, get it back, have something worthwhile that you're happy to keep, you know, by the time you've got all the parts uh, for, for your next build. Up to you, it's a suggestion. I'm trying to get this out as soon as possible as well so that it does stay relevant. But it doesn't mean that you can't apply some form of these strategies in your everyday building and or learning about computers. So back to the motherboard at hand. It's got your ATX 26 pin here connection. No, I beg your pardon. That's over here, your connection. This is one of your old connections that is sort of redundant today. On the other hand, it's got plenty of cooling and whatnot as well. It's got additional... Uh, PCI slots over here, PCIe slots uh, times one, I believe, which is great because um, it doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi this board, so it can take a new Wi-Fi card or it can take an, even an older Wi-Fi card over here. So that's what these uh, ones are used for here. So, and that's plenty fast enough to be able to accommodate your current Wi-Fi today and just for general purposes at the very least, like gaming and whatnot. It's got uh, surprisingly, uh, six RAM slots. So this will allow for more about the RAM slots later on when we get to the RAM. Okay, guys, but that's really interesting thing. Not eight, not four, but six. So that's a cool thing. You don't normally see that today. On a side note, make sure you're always holding the board on the side. You're not holding it onto the circuitry itself. I have to be very careful so that I don't bend the sockets in this i mean bend the pins in the socket here so we'll be very very gentle with her we don't actually have a cover for her she's an old board okay so if we have a look over here we can see the io where the io shield will go we do have an io shield as well and our subsequent ports so port wise so we luckily we've got the io shield if you ever get secondhand parts and you haven't got an io shield don't fret too much. Uh, it will be fine. It's not the end of the world, but it, it is good to, if it's not there, ask the owner, the seller, whether the IO shields also provided so that you've got that, that cleaner looking image on, on the build itself, as well as, you know, little, you know, nasties don't get in um, or prying fingers or whatnot. So it's, it's up to you, you know, if you want to pursue that. Yeah. So it's got uh, your six standard ports so for, for decent, decent surround sound and whatnot. It's got your network uh, port there as well. And the rest you got, uh, unfortunately, it's only 2.0, 2.0, uh, four USB slots there. So Firewire as well. So that, that's pretty decent if you can get, if you can find a cable these days that's compatible with anything else. It's something to to look into sorry i thought that was the phone it's just the plane going by also it's got your uh eSATA eSATA or SATA depending on how you say it uh, ports so another thing to look into it's not commonplace today in that in that respect um but yeah it's something that surprisingly will give you faster faster transfer speeds and functionality and availability uh uh, regarding the board, uh, where the USB 2.0 ports will be really lacking. Will that hurt you in the long run? Definitely, but we're not planning on keeping this PC forever unless it's a secondary PC and, you know, we don't require that. So 
first things first, you've got your motherboard. Um, best thing to do is to always grab yourself a box as well to work on. So I'm gonna grab an old box if you don't have the motherboard box, a motherboard box will do. And we'll press on. Okay, so with the motherboard itself, so I spent about on the chip going back to the CPU, I got the chip for approximately 50 Australian dollars. So that's about $30 US. You wouldn't want to spend more than that. This chip was, like I said, it's, it should be a nice chip as well. And I got it through a friend. On the marketplace, they can go for a lot less. You can get some on AliExpress or Alibaba or whatever those places are called. Um, but I've seen them. They, they, they're true to the word. They, they will come uh, eventually. You know, in Australia, it can take up to eight weeks, depending on what part of Australia you're in. I think it's similar with the US as well. So it's something to consider if you want to build right now. You might have to be going on Craigslist, on Australian Gamtree, and and or you know marketplace and whatnot to uh, get those bargains now rather than sitting on them and sitting on your ass doing nothing, frankly, because you're bored out of your wits. So with the motherboard itself. Speaking of pricing, I spent a hundred dollars on the motherboard, which is a lot. But with that said, I managed to get myself. There was uh, three modules of RAM available, uh, or at least you know, unconventionally, there was three modules, and that was twelve gigabytes of RAM. So essentially, it's some basic, uh, basic RAM. Strontium, I don't even remember from the day, and it's only 1333 megahertz. Surprisingly, this board itself can only do 1066 megahertz or less rated RAM in, in that regards. But the BIOS, newer BIOS versions allowed for uh, faster RAM, and we can get up to 1600 megahertz on this board. It's not crazy. But with enough DDR3 RAM, which is what it is, we should have the luxury of being able to power those games and applications sufficiently to tie us over until we've got our DDR4. If, you, if you're lucky enough and you're waiting long enough, DDR5 RAM coming out soon. Or sooner rather than later, should I say. But with that being said, I've got six, gives, uh, six sticks what gives. Well, I had some spare DDR3 RAM. Okay, so we've got we've got three four gigabyte six of the strontium or whatever it's called. Okay, so four, eight, twelve gigabytes, and we've got three sticks of two gigabytes. So two, four, six, giving us a total RAM amount of DDR3 RAM, which is all thirteen thirty three RAM by the way, giving us a total amount of eighteen gigabytes. What gives? We'll get to it when once we're building. Okay, we're gonna use all of it, frankly, in this build. So, and I hope, I hope it will work. On the other hand, um, I did have because I'm an avid builder in many ways. I did have some uh, rip jaws lying about, uh, which is your DDR3 two one three three megahertz RAM. Now. These are two eight gigabyte sticks, okay? So for a total of 16 gigabytes. So you'd say, wouldn't you conventionally use these? Wouldn't that be a better option? Even though you're saying you've got 18 gigabytes over there. Well, one, there's 18 gigabytes over there. So we're gonna use that. Two, it's 2133 megahertz RAM. There's no way, it's just a waste essentially. So if you see something that's 1033, 1333 megahertz uh, in RAM and the board equivalent can't go any higher. Don't spend that extra $50 on that secondhand RAM. It's just, it's a, it's a bogus buy for you essentially, but we'll leave that there for the time being um, so that you guys can get a better look at it. On a side note then, the other thing that we will need is a graphics card okay and our graphics card to tie us over in the meantime i'll chuck that one just there for the time being and we'll discuss that as i move this across here what do we have we have a 1050 ti oc 
four gigabyte edition from MSI as well. Now this graphics card is a GTX NVIDIA card. I'll bring it back over here now so that you guys can better get a better look. And this card is a very standard card. It's nothing special, but it coupled with the CPU, hopefully overclocked a little bit, should be sufficient enough to give you enough performance today to last you until your next PC coming up sooner rather than later. Hopefully we all cross our fingers about that, don't we? This card is your same equivalent of say, realistically, uh, even a 1060 in that, re in that respect, even potentially some old uh, old varieties of the lower versions of the 1650s that were four gigabytes. Why? Because this is on GDRR5 memory and so were those 1650s at one stage before they stopped making them in GDRR5 and made them in GDRR6. If you've got a little bit more to splurge, then a card like that might be fresher, might be newer, might be a better budget orientated option. Make sure it's GDRR6 rather other than GDRR5 then on those 1650s, 1660s and whatnot that are applicable to that, okay? Otherwise, you'll get some bogus performance results potentially marketed to you if it's, if it's not clear as day, okay? It doesn't mean they won't work depending on how much you spend, it's up to you, but it's just something that everyone should consider, okay? So I was really happy with the purchase for this. In this current day and age, it's very difficult to get a GPU full stop. The only other things I personally had lying about were I just, apart from the ones in the systems which are running, are just one gigabyte old legacy cards realistically. And, and as a legacy build, maybe we should use a legacy card. It's not gonna work guys. One gigabyte, even GDR5, is not going to work in this day and age. Even a two gigabyte 650 Ti um, maybe has uh, pretty much, it's gone to pasture. Um, I would look for at the minimum something along the lines of one of these, an RX 570, an RX 580 if you're lucky perhaps. Um, but they will be between two to three hundred dollars. This on the other hand was, I believe, I'll just double check again, it was hundred and forty dollars Australian, which is approximately in this current climate about a hundred and twenty dollars of their odd US. So the Australian dollar is getting to the higher ends of the 80 cents value of the American dollar currently. So everything is about 20% dearer for us essentially in the figure market if you guys are just doing the basic maths yourselves. Okay, so we'll pop that aside over here. Actually, we'll leave that for the time being. And apart from that, uh, I'll just get my notes over here. So essentially um, for, for this componentry in total, we're paying about $290 Australian or $230 American, okay? So that will give us, coupled with re investing what we're planning on buying in our new build now, sooner rather than later, a great PC that has certain parts that aren't necessary, but they can be transferred into your new build. So you're not sitting on your asses doing anything. It makes sense, why not do this? You know, you've got a thousand ready, let's just get the case already. Let's just get the power supply already. Let's get a few other things that we need. What, what else do we need? Okay, so for this, for the performance that we actually need in this day and age, a hard disk, a mechanical hard disk is too outdated, okay? For the operating system. On the other hand, your new PCs are probably going to be running on NVMEs. Um, that's your SSD NVMe uh, M2, uh, and they will be booting off that. So you'll have your operating system on these. Let me grab one of these for you, just as an example. Um, hopefully, Mr. Luigi is not going to fall down. Oh my God, it's amazing. So we've got our 970 Evo pluses. So this is something, this is just Gen 3. You're probably on Gen 4 by now. Um, but that's an NVMe there. I'll show you a little bit close over here. 
So yeah, that's an NVMe. That's not what we're after, okay? So forget about it. Um, you can't buy that just yet. You're gonna to have to wait and save your money, okay? Or you can, I guess, if you've got enough and have it ready to go, but it's up to you. Um, what we do need though, is an SSD, a standard SSD. So that will be ample performance and that's all with that these boards can handle. That's why we're not getting NVMEs. Um, and we've got ourselves a 500, I had a spare 500 gigabyte uh, SSD Samsung laying about. So we're gonna be utilizing that. So yeah, um, I'll pop this back over here for the time being and we'll grab that SSD. It already came with uh, a bracket. Uh, the bracket, I've already got it mounted to the bracket itself. It takes four screws. I only use two because I'm lazy. Make sure you use all of them, okay? Um, secure them. Uh, you want to be always very gentle with mechanical drives especially because they have moving parts but ssds as well i've found that i've got things such as nvmes which are your which i use for transferring data and just uh you know just just your portable ones in that sense i knock them when they're actually transferring data and it cuts the data transmission off so you have to be very careful. I don't, it could be the connection itself. It could be the drive itself. That is just, you, you, you always have to be careful with computer componentry, regardless of what people say, regardless of how they even clean them. I mean, it's probably not the best advice. Um, it's definitely not going to maintain the warranty if you got new parts and it's something that you probably wouldn't do with new parts. So why do them with old ones? You know what I mean? Um, but on a side note, uh, so we've got that ready to go. And this brackets come out of, uh, I don't I don't think it was the original bracket. This is uh, partially why I actually got this case for $10. I got a case that will show you guys. Um, I got it for 10 bucks. And on a technicality, that brings my price up to $300, okay? And we're going to leave a cap there and we're going to forgive me because I could easily have used one of these power supplies like a straight power 11 1000 watt platinum or your RG bargy I R I R G B I like I just say RG bargy too much I apologize um uh 850 watt plus from thermal tech there um, but it would be overkill for me personally as a demonstrated thing. So I have a spare one, which I utilize generally speaking for, uh, testing and whatnot of systems. And I got that at one stage, uh, for $40. I don't know if you can get something for that price Australian. So you're looking at $30 American, um, but it's a thermal take 650 bronze, uh, smart power power supply before COVID occurred. So I've had this power supply sitting around, okay? Um, if you're savvy enough, you can still get yourself a power supply sufficient in power. And for the powering a system like this, you approximately need 130 watt total power draw, PCIe lanes and whatnot, uh, powering the fact that the graphics card does not need connections has got no connections for power it only gets powered by the pcie lanes themselves and they can pull about 75 watts i believe okay so they can they can add that that's something uh that uh so all the power gets goes through the motherboards itself in that regards and realistically you could get away with a 450 watt power supply 550 watt power supply would be recommended but if you need to buy one okay then get the one you're going to use for your system and it'll be totally fine it won't use more power it'll just be more efficient okay guys so understand that we're going to move on quickly so that we can get to this build i'm getting excited okay so next things next next things next is the cooler itself so I actually haven't uh, washed this cooler down. I realize I should have, and we will. Um, there's a, there's a, 
inclining in me currently to uh, reuse that thermal paste, but that just shows you the type of person I am. A tight ass, frankly. <laughs> After all, I'm not doing a new build here. I'm doing an old build. So it says something about me. No, seriously, it's there's merit to all of it, okay? And if you understand this, you understand that. It'll make life a lot easier and a transition from this to that will occur very seamlessly for you, okay? So I'm glad everyone's here again. I appreciate all the likes and follows and subscribes. Um, please smash that like button down at the bottom there hit the subscribe button, enjoy the content at Robbie Tech. It's made for you all. And I, again, am grateful for the support. Okay, coming back to the cooler, it is a Dark Rock Pro 4 cooler. So I'll bring it up over here. So it does come with two fans. So there's a space there, it's a dual cooler. And because we're planning on overclocking this build, it's a good, good, cooler if you're planning on going the air route this slots in right there i don't know if it's the right way it should actually be that way so it'll slot in that way through there okay but not just yet because we have to install it eventually um, i will leave that just over here now this cooler on the other hand again it gets factored into your next build cost you have to be savvy you have to be smart people so what you do is you look at if you're air cooling or not okay generally speaking as long as it's not the fred ripper equivalent generally speaking or something that's extravagant like that uh, coolers are very universal, okay? They do have backwards compatible socketry, okay? This has forward and backward compatibility available to it as well. So this will run on your 5000 AM4 sockets in that regards. It will, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, your Zen 3 uh, socketry in that regards. Um, it will run Zen 2s, um, Zen 2 Plus, it goes all the way back to, I'll give you an example. I think I just broke something. It will go all the way back to say your Socket 942 boards, which are AMD old, uh, I think it's like AM2 plus or AM3 or something. I can't even remember exactly, but these are, this are nine, this is a nine or 10 year old board as well. It's got an FX Black 8350, which I mentioned earlier previously. Very, very enthusiast, fun chip to play with. And another consideration regarding if you come across this, I would consider it and they've aged very well. So they were, they weren't as competitive now, but because games are more core hungry nowadays, those eight cores, eight threads have come into fruition. Okay. You could get some really high clocks as well. If you ever look up a fella like the Bauer, okay. The Bauer managed to get these up to, I believe, um, on LNT. So liquid nitrogen cooling to, uh, I think it was six or seven gigahertz. Don't quote me exactly. I'm understating myself. But the funny part is, is it's about a year newer than this board itself. And look at all the USB 3.0 uh, headers. It's insane. So missed out there, didn't we? Um, but that's a point. You'll be able to do faster file transfers and whatnot. You have the luxury of using that new webcam from Brio that you got. By the way, check out my Brio uh, review recently uploaded um, regarding 4K webcam usage and whatnot. There's a couple of them. And yeah, like you require a 3.0 header. So it's something to consider if you've got options available to you on the marketplace regarding your secondhand purchases, okay? So, with that being said, let us fix all this up a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to, I'm going to put a few things aside. We'll clean it up and we'll get started on this build.
Much better. Let's wait for that. Just don't play cards with them, but you know what I mean? You can't, you can't. Oh, it's second hand guys. Come on, man. It, it used to be worth less. Now it's worth more. So I guess I, I'm at fault if it doesn't work. I apologize. Okay, let's put that over here again. Let's get the CPU over here. Okay. Um, if you can't see it, I apologize. Um, that's because we're not getting that ready. I like to do resets and then just mentally I can continue forward. Okay. So. In fact. I'm back. Did you miss me? Um, for you, it was like a split second, but for me, it was an eternity. My heart aches. Boom, boom, boom. No, it's really rhythmic currently because I'm trying not to uh, say too many stupid things, frankly. It's going to give me a lot of work ahead of myself, um, getting ahead too far ahead of myself, but um, at the same time, I want to make sure that my head's in the game as well, because now it's time to build, okay, people? So let's, let's go. On a side note, we've got a little bit extra couple of little bits and pieces, which are part of the cooler. Um, these little finicky bits hold that fan in place, that second one. That's disgusting to use. I will explain how to connect them up and the theory behind it. Um, but I will probably edit forward through it because I'm not going to spend a minute, a minute and a half, up to 10 minutes trying to connect these little things because they're so finicky. That's a, probably, regardless of the fact that the cooler itself can help sta stable stabilize and overclock itself um to a decent level they've got it's got a 250 uh tdp in that regard so it can handle those 130 watt power uh cpus that we're currently using in in that regards but you know to be honest um the design could have been slightly better the luxury of these little latches themselves is it allows for you to lift the fan up and down and depending on the type of RAM you have, it, it's, go, it's going to be very, very forgiving. Now that's something to consider if you're going air cooling. This type of RAM, for example, is your shortest type of RAM available. It's pretty much standard. This one, on the other hand, does have some heat sinks here on it. Okay, so that's a good thing, but they're both the same height, okay? Now, On a side note, if you're doing a build nowadays, you probably got yourself some G-Skill RAM, not this type of sword, but as you can see, it's got some heat sinks on it as well. Now, if we compare that to the other RAM over here, we suddenly realize that there is a differential. That's gonna equate, and if we use this RAM in this build as well, it would have been problematic. We would have had to have raised those fans up a little bit. Um, just a little bit, it's not gonna make too much of a difference. The difference between that is if you got yourself something like this original Dominator RAM, yikes, okay? Then you're really struggling because half the bloody cooler's not even gonna get any any fanage on it. Do you get me? Like you understand is look have a look at on this side as opposed to this side. This clear as day over here. So depending on what I decide you guys see, um, I apologize for the uh, confusion if there was any. Okay, so first things first, how do we start? Very, very simple. Either with the RAM, the CPU, 
Um, definitely not the cooler because that stuff's going underneath it. So yeah, um, let's start with the traditional uh, traditional approach and grab our CPU, okay? So I'm working back to front here, so it's a little bit new for me in that regards. I'm gonna, that means it's gonna, I'm going to be left-handed where I should be right as well. Um, from a habitual standpoint, it's something to take note and forgive me for if I suddenly break all the pins. I, you know, if I, that happens, this video takes a spiral down very quickly, but two, the next level I am an optimist and then it'll be a pin cleansing slash repairing build I mean video okay so I have to orientate myself what I might do is Forgive myself a little bit for doing this. You guys still have a clear view, I'm sure of it. Now, this all Intel pins in this regards, generally speaking, have got a little arrow. So that arrow has to go where the arrow is facing on your motherboard. Unfortunately, this X58 Pro motherboard decided to be extra confusing and it has no arrows. Luckily, these old chips also have two grooves as well to the set. Refer to your manual, it generally will give you the instruction set proper to how to install the chip itself, okay? Make sure, that again, you ask for the IO shields as well as any applicable manuals if possible. If not, don't fret. You should be able to track down those manuals online at the applicable motherboard vendor websites, okay guys? You just have to know what they're called, the model numbers and whatnot, MS5, 2.2 version 3.1 regarding this motherboard specifically will get you that motherboard manual. I've got a lot of it, of it up in my head as well already because I had a browse at it earlier on. So as a result of that, we won't necessarily need to look through it today because, and if we do, I'll probably edit it out unless there's something that we can factor into the equation itself, okay? Um, but we'll continue this build essentially. So the chip itself will be dropped into this spot here. And I'm hoping it's the case without actually looking because um, I've pulled it in and out a couple of times in the last day or so. So there we go. And give it a little bit of a wiggle. I, I promise you these aren't dirty hands. That's old thermal paste that we I was cleaning up. Okay, so that's definitely in. I like to just make sure because I never trust. Um, that's, that's, that's an issue I have when you know, you're know you a sole trader. You have to be very difficult and, uh, and very, very uh, reserved because it's all on you essentially in that regards, okay? So what we do is we just let the clip go down and it latches underneath here. Make sure that it's wiggled because it's, you know, just, just everything is aligned up and sort of snug. Take that latch down and Bob's your uncle, uncle Jane's your aunt, it's locked into place. Give it a double check there, everything seems cool. Um, don't touch anything else in regards to the uh, on the PCB motherboard itself and that you don't want to be touching these little things you can brush them off they can come off you might brick your board okay so just be very careful always grab it from the side work on the box itself you can swing it around and whatnot and you'll be swell okay So on the other hand, I've already got the brackets installed for the cooler itself. This did come with uh, standardized uh, brackets and a standard cooler, okay? Um, but we can't use the cooler in this case. We're trying to unce out as much performance from this motherboard as we can. So we've gone ahead and we bought that, that compatible uh, cooler that we're going to use in our with our Ryzen 5600X system for example okay so it's a nice cooler as well it's all blacked out it's a black they they generally be quiet in that regards is your has your black coolers and whatnot um uh something equivalent is like your Noctua Noctua uh coolers which the black Chromex editions for example cost you approximately 70 to 80 to 90 
dollars more in Australia. And so what's that equate to the US? About 60, 70 bucks more, you know? So, you know, just because you're getting the black variety. So if you can handle it, go with the beige. Uh, if you're trying to save a penny or two, but if it's if it's all about looks and aesthetics for you, then obviously I know where you're going, okay? Um, so we've got that locked in place. Next on the agenda, what do we do? We're gonna probably go with the RAM. Okay, so we'll flip that over. Again, you're going to have to refer to your manual. It's the best way to go. It'll literally tell you, depending on the type of RAM you have available, you'll have conventionally two sticks, four sticks, okay? If you have that many sticks or one stick, it'll tell you what slots, or three sticks, it'll tell you what slots to put those sticks in, okay? Those modules or RAMs, those into what dim slots, okay? So on the other hand, I've got six sticks of RAM, okay? And I, I'm just hoping I set it up correctly. Now, the, the unique thing about this motherboard itself is it's got not one, not two, not four, but six dim slots, okay? And that enables you to have three channel mode or tri channel mode RAM as opposed to dual channel mode. That's why we're going this route rather than having the two 16 gigabyte sticks in dual channel. Three channel mode, just like four channel mode, allows for the privilege of more channels to be accessed at once, okay? Uh, the problem is you don't want to have it under flooded in that regard. So you do still want to have a bit of meat in each channel, okay? So in this regards, we would have had four, eight, 12, uh, four gigabytes in each channel um, originally, okay? But because I had a couple of two st uh, gigabyte sticks laying about collecting dust because they're too small for anything else, this is the perfect scenario for them, okay? And we're going to essentially do the simple, in a simple manner, explain to you that we're going to put six gigabytes per channel. As a result, it's gonna be six by six by six in tri-channel mode. Six gigabytes of channel that can be accessed as opposed to the two eights at the 16 is gonna be two channels of eight. Yes, there's more RAM there, but three channels is beneficial, okay, in this regards. And it's a great way to go, okay? 18 gigabytes combined in this fashion is going to be insane. Conventionally speaking, they say you can't do it. I'm gonna show you that it can be done, okay? On top of this, we're going to try, because this is old RAM and it's measly RAM, it's not your 21, 33 or is it 33 megahertz DDR3? It's not DDR4, definitely not DDR5. So we're going to try to overclock it, okay? We've got the BIOS updated in regards to this. Uh, from my understanding, the BIOS accepts up to 1600 megahertz RAM. So when we're playing with the clock speeds there, we're going to try to boost that RAM speed up as well. It will allow regarding the overclock itself to be able to get a higher clock and multiplier happening, okay? So that enough said about that. That's something we'll talk about too in part two. Look forward to it. If you're interested, please, uh, continue on forward guys because uh it'll just get crazier with me okay just on a side note um i will steer you in the right direction regarding overclocking i'll make sure that you are taught the proper way okay it's a stable overclock that we're trying to get it's nothing world record breaking or shattering it's just going to be an everyday overclock that gets as much performance out so that you can continue to use it and the computer for as long as possible, okay, guys? So if you're interested in i7-950-950 overclock will be the next video produced by Robbie Tech. Look out for it. And they may all come out at the same time because benchmarking this PC will be the third video and it will be probably a lot shorter than these last two um, in that esteem. But yeah, um, I'm definitely not gonna put them all together and I'm gonna part them out as maybe just a three part series or something for the uh, computer itself that we're building today, okay? Specifically in my case, okay guys? Um, so let's start out with popping those modules of RAM into place. The way I'm handling them now, it's not recommended, okay? So don't do it. Okay, first things first, get every dim slot open like you would otherwise, okay? 
um, sometimes one side here, depending on the motherboard, may not click open, okay? Just something to look at, but if they both open, then in that case, open both of them, both the tabs, okay? Then DDR3, very simple. One side is not quite in the center and it's off to the other side. Just make sure that you go to that side here, okay? Where applicable, you're going to have to pop it down in and then just wait for one side push down. So I'll push close towards me, click, click. And then I like going in the center, just make sure everything's square, okay? Next thing's next. We're gonna take the uh, four gigabyte module. We just popped in a two and we're gonna put it, because I've already checked the manual and how, how it works. Um, and I understand that, yikes, hold on. See that? And that's a perfect beginner mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> i don't know how i've done that they've, they've all spun around like crazy like um i'm actually worried now because um i actually um the proper etiquette is to test whether uh your computer system works okay uh before you continue on um and by what i mean by that bear with me one moment is to have it on the board and get your power supply and everything uh, connected, okay? Before you put it in the case, you run it, you test it. Um, you can even configure the BIOS to some degree if, you're, if you so desire that stage. But you just make sure that it's running and it's working correctly, okay? Because otherwise, once you put it in the case with the, uh, with the AIO, if you're using an... Um, all-in-one liquid cooler or the massive air cooler and you've got everything configured and you bother doing all the cable tying and whatnot and it doesn't start you're back to square one again and you're probably going to have to pull it all out okay i'm aware that this will work there's a chance that there will be a retraining of the memory now because i did have them specifically uh, lined up in a specific fashion i knew exactly how the module should have gone back in i've been playing around with them that's something perhaps that i might bring into part two um depending on how we go and with time and how long this actual videos will go part one and part two will come out in quick succession the benchmarks for part three will probably be a couple of days following okay guys so let's continue on uh so we'll grab the next stick and back same principle uh, be careful with these older ram modules they can be a little bit uh aggressive on the uh fingers okay so you may develop calluses if this is what you do all day but there we go. The third one's in. So always refer to your manual. It's your best point of call regarding RAM. Generally speaking, you won't mix and match RAM, but just understand that there, you've got the luxury, even a four, four dual, um, dual um, channel mode, you might have two eight gigabyte sticks for 16 gigabytes of RAM and two four gigabytes six for eight gigabytes ram you can do something quite similar and alternate it per channel so you can have eight to you can have 12 in one channel and 12 in another up until the point that you then have all the simultaneous ram understand that ram generally speaking should be of the same nature it means there's less chance of it not being compatible or not working okay it doesn't mean it's not possible i've done it before on a 97k system with my old 7700 ram which was only eight gigabytes at the stage of uh ddr4 kingston or something ram something crappy um and i got some g skill ram and i was like you know what i can use that maybe and pop it in there and i did the similar principle that applied regarding this ram i did it with that machine up until the point that i had the replacement ram available i can prove it to you i can show you it but i'm not going into today frankly okay um, you can trust me my integral values are held deeply within my own soul and i will be scorning it if i wasn't true to myself and true to you as such as well okay so let's continue on people um, 
so next things next we've got our ram i like to uh mash it down like that don't don't make sure make sure you're never warping the board where that's going to come into play is with our next step more so or our second step from here which is putting the cooler on the motherboard okay um if you over tighten it there's a chance you can warp that board it can cause damage so you have to be very careful if you know the torque then apply the torque and amount this is very prevalent when it comes to higher end systems as well like thread rippers and that where literally the torque screws you need to go you know what i mean and actually do it to the specifications itself otherwise the cpu itself may not even start okay I'm just gonna have some coffee, guys. Mmm, that's a good cup of. That's a good cup of. That's a good cup of. Mmm, that's a good cup. Of. It's like iced coffee because it's been here since the morning. Okay, one other thing I neglected to mention is you're probably going to require some thermal paste, okay? So thermal paste, uh, get some decent quality thermal paste, do some research, okay? Get yourself at least a 3.5 gram tube and you should be smitten regarding the application of that thermal paste onto this build and your new build. You will have enough. You will have enough for at least three applications if you play your cards right, okay? So I've got some arctic silver uh film paste over here it's a 12 gram tube so it's not big but it's not small and it should um we should have plenty for the job at hand today how do we do this depending on the amount of uh chiplets inside the board the dies themselves and whatnot um there's a location there's generally speaking the older the, the uh the chip generally like your old two core two duos okay they had two dies in essence um or they had to that like right in the center the application was necessary that's why there's always a debate regarding the amount of uh the amount of thermal paste you should use, realistically speaking, it should be a piece worth, okay? Just about a piece worth, okay? I always like to put a little bit more. I like to go on, the, I like to side on the, on the side of caution and just make sure there's just enough that it doesn't seep out everywhere else. Because if it seeps out, you have to understand that it might damage things, cause connections to be made, and as a result, cause things to fray, okay? So, just keep an eye out, people, okay? And bear with me as I get shaky, okay? Because now we get a little bit more serious, okay? We're at the P. And a little more. And it's going to get a little sticky. Just give it a little twist. Wait for the spaghetti to uh, finish up. And there we go, Magnifico. Oakley Doakley, I'll put that back where that belongs. In its little toolbox at the top there. And next things next. How do, oh, I prematurely I'm going to cut there. I'm going to clean the top side of this and make it look like it was clean to begin with. But actually, why not? Why not explain to you how to clean it yourself? Um, you're going to have to up through all. You're using it in the new build as well. Okay, so easiest way to get thermal paste off things is to start off not with a damp torque cloth, but to start off with a dry one, okay? Dry will aid you immensely. I'm going to make it a little bit more usable and just wipe rather sternly. Um, if you're wiping chiplets and whatnot, or CPUs in that sense, um, make sure that you are 
sort of guiding the skirts of it, not pushing down over them, because again, you don't want it to get on any other open circuitry. It may cause, if you don't, if it gets on there, you have to be very meticulous in your approach and get it cleaned off, okay, before you run the computer. So, side on the side of caution, take your time with everything you do, especially around the CPU and whatnot, and you should be fine, okay? So we've almost got that clean. After that's done, generally speaking, some isopropyl, some uh, 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 rubbing alcohol of a 90% greater higher is recommended to use. It tends to uh, evaporate rather quickly and um, it makes the experience a lot more jolly as well, okay? So I don't have any of that and I am, I'm quite satisfied with the wipe I had, this this paste wasn't very old. It's not very uh, degraded in that sense. It doesn't, it, it didn't need replacing, hence why I was considering being a tight ass, frankly. Um, so instead we're gonna continue on with a clean now. I'm gonna take that out because the way this is installed is First things first is Be Quiet has a logo here. That logo should be facing down, okay? It should be facing like you would looking at it, okay? So if I look at look you look at you over here, if the RAM is on this side, that's where the intake's coming in from the case, generally speaking, onto the RAM first, okay? So the Be Quiet logo should be facing horror uh horizontal to the board itself okay so that way the first fan that's on there is taking the intake it's going to be spinning that way and taking air in okay so what happens then is you make sure that you've got enough space um, between the location of the fan and generally speaking the default position for standard ram that it comes pre-installed this first fan okay um, is generally speaking in the right place, okay? You just want to make sure that it's also connected c correctly here. Just double check everything's fine there and it's applicable and the, on the same sort of a level um, on the other side as well. From there on in, I'm going to take this out here. Hopefully you guys noticed. If you didn't notice the fact that there was uh, paste on that, there is paste on that now. So the board is live. Well, it will be, eventually. Weird signs. Uh -uh. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God, I am crazy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is me normally, okay? But when I build computers, I just get so excited! Okay, no, in all seriousness, it, we're getting to the, uh, they're like, you wanna squish it down, but you wanna be firm, but not too firm, but you wanna be even first, the most important thing. So. Just get your bearings. Before we do that, though, we need one other thing. I'm jumping ahead. We need the little latch. This is going to connect up um, to the uh, two sides there, giving it rigidity and holding it into place, okay? It's a nice, neat design that's um, qu quite unique to be quiet in this case, okay? They've done a good job. This just essentially gets slotted directly in the middle I'll take it out again and I'll show you on the other side. So it's got some grooves, okay? And it's as simple as that. You just have to get it in the center groove, okay? And by simple, I mean it's not that simple. It never is, okay? It gets fiddly when it shouldn't be fiddly. What happens is I talk like a goose when I'm doing it and that way I don't edit it out. Instead, I, if I was quiet and I didn't say anything, you wouldn't even notice. It'd be like that, wouldn't it? Um, so why not just make a mess of things and continue talking because it still gives me the consideration of doing so or not. So I believe that that's not at all in the Santa. Sorry, sometimes I'm I'm used to uh, I'm used to numbing out the uh, f bomb because YouTube will only let you say so many. So now we finally got it in the center. 
we'll continue on our merry cruise hit ready to hit this club with our cpu buzz let's go okay so i'm going to drop it down and line it up with the spots there make sure you're level as well because it's not going to be pretty frankly but once you got it down in the right spot and you're getting those screws in it's going to be really really solid okay so and by level i mean you know don't drop it on an angle because that little latch that we popped on, it will pop off quite easily, okay? So I'm going to check on both sides and see whether it in fact, there's, it's, if you push to this side, you can sort of feel the fact that it should be level to the other side, um, to the top latch, to the bottom latch, okay? And that way you can almost level it out yourself, make it even okay then you still don't want to press down because you don't want to squish that excess amount in my case of pace that's why i'm being extremely careful into a specific area you want it to be spread completely evenly at the beginning and fill all those imperfections that's what the pace does to allow for proper conductivity and transfer of heat from the uh, cpu ihs to the actual uh, cooler itself Now what we need is a screwdriver. Unfortunately, if you were, if you got this second hand, this Be Quiet Cooler, great. Make sure you ask for the Be Quiet screwdriver that came with it. It's the only one that will get in the hole to be able to screw it into place, okay? So what we do next is, the technique that's utilized is you put the, uh, that's why we got the fan out for the time being is you put the uh, screwdriver in it's magnetic but my magnet is starting to wear thin frankly um, hopefully it'll hold on you don't want to move around a little bit you just want to put it into place i'm doing it for the likes of you guys now so i apologize if i get my head in the way and just into the hole now that you've got it lined up hopefully properly i feel for the thread just get it a little bit in there take it out not all the way in and get the other one in and then we're going to evenly apply pressure as we screw both screws into place fully so i'm going to do the other side same technique applies here This time you won't get a chance to see, but you'll hear whether I start swearing or not, whether it's actually going in. It's not going in. I don't know how that works. Okay, I'm going to go back, double check, and there we go. So I could push the back level, essentially. Make sure that big, quiet logo is flush with the board itself. And that way you're not going on that axis and twisting around. You don't want to do that. You want to squish it completely evenly down as much as possible regarding that paste. This time around, I should be able to get it into the thread. I still haven't. Yikes. And this is what I mean by fiddly nature. And me talking my goddamn socks off. There's a chance I've got the wrong screw as well. Okay, I'm going to take back, start again. Um, because I'm doing this for you guys in that sense, I'm going to grab myself a torch because I've got poor lighting in here currently. Just get a better visual because I'm going in blind, thinking I can do it. And just making sure that I'm not screwing a thread. I've got the right screw or something there's i was using a different screw frankly before which was a mismatch i thought i found the match so there's a chance that this screw isn't identical so this is what i mean by threading it through grabbing it there through a technique 
not twisting it around too much crazily. I just see it's off alignment, so we'll pop it on alignment. And that's why you don't want to put one side down too far deep, okay? Because it's in the thread now, finally. No, it's not. Sometimes you do need an assistant, frankly. It's nice to have. I'm going to try to work this out, and we'll be back in a jiffy. This always fucking happens with this cool man. I fucking hate him. Great cooling. Great cooling, but just such a bitch. You slut. You have to do it. You have to do it every single time I'm on fucking camera doing it. You little fucking cow. Now I got it. Let's try it for a 17th time in the unedited version. We might we might actually have in the shorter part three version um, of this. I might actually have some bloopers, frankly. Um, the point is, <laughs> if I don't get so vulgar when I'm. Are you effing kidding me? No, it's it's finally gone in, guys. It has gone in. It, it's going in. Oh my god! I was about to say. I thought. <sighs> I thought I was unthreading it there for a second. Obviously, when it comes to screws and whatnot. So now you go back to the other one, and you just go that little bit further. And obviously, in a clockwise direction. I can't get it in the thread now. I can't get it in the hole. I can't get it in a hole. There we go. Got it in the hole. And the other side. See, I'm alternating just like a car tire, and you would alternate if there was four nuts. You go diagonally across, and then and then alternate subse subsequently. Almost down, and you're going to go the whole nine yards, people. But only do about three or four twists on each side as you go further down, okay, until you hit rock bottom, okay. Do not over tighten, but generally speaking, if you've got the actual right screws, because I don't, that's why I'm being extra careful. You want to make sure it should bottom out at the point of no return, but give you just enough space to make sure that you don't over tighten the board itself okay if you're forcing it you know you're going too much okay that's a general rule okay there it's locked done so this one there done it was half a turn and no more so i'll have a look over here i'll bring that over here and you guys can see what i'm talking about okay so Hopefully you can see that on the angle there and with the light there. This is exactly what I, this is what I was referring to and playing with and it can be very very fiddly. Now that we've got it on. Get a good view on that. Now that we got our, now that we got it on or we got it in, we can continue on a merry cruise, ready to hit the club with a hip hop step buzz. Cause, cause, no, no, I'm not a rapper, so don't quote me, please. Um. Or do, I guess, and I'll feel flattered. But, uh, so next thing's next. We've got our, I'll move this to the side so that everyone can have a better view. 
we've got our fan over here so again the way to know which side's the intake which is the air going in and which side's the outtake is generally speaking the frame the additional ugly part is on the outtake so the air will be pushing out from that side and in turn air coming in you want to align that with your cooler in the in regards to it in the same way so air is going to be coming in here so we want air from the center here to be coming in from this side as well okay so then i have you have to at your own discretion decide or you you have to think ahead and you've got your one fan power over here and you've got your other fan power over here that's going to connect up to the connection there that's going to be then connected up to the cpu fan header over here locate your cpu fan header before you play around with the fans be aware of where it is our, our case is just over here as mentioned previously at the beginning and we're going to essentially work out how we're going to manage our cords our cpu cords first so that we can conceal them later on easily enough okay i've already worked out a way of doing it i'm gonna thread this in essentially this side and the cpu cord will come around the bottom side over here on the left side of the ram here neatly hidden away from all prying eyes and then top side over here it's going to be so congested like it always is on top side of a motherboard um that anything that we can't completely hide will be out of the line of sight anyway okay so it'll be nicely concealed this again is going to get fiddly so i'm going to um sort of explain how you connect this up so i've got everything all the fanage all the cables in a spot this is probably i'll probably do something tricky with you know like just go like that and that way i'll just sort of lie like that once we're done with it okay but before we get to that stage i have to explain the fanage situation and these little clips that i was complaining about earlier so they're just that little bits of metal that can easily be broken and whatnot just essentially as a guide just copy the one that's already pre-installed okay but this time if it's gone this way we're going to have a go from over here to this side so it has to go into the groove there but it's got a couple of different ways it can actually turn see how it's already getting clingy it gets very clingy so we're going to put one in there and then flick it back around this way we're going to pull that fan out just a smidge to deal with the first side first same insert into the other hole get it in the hole come on that's what no you can't say things like that yikes i guess i can't that's what she said at least what okay so once in place another guide is just sort of guide it back into inside and i just like to sort of hold it level while i apply pressure on this side okay that way the t one side's going to be a bit more difficult to get in than the other but once there it should lock into place be careful not to push it further in you might pop it back out again same with pushing it from this side you'll pop it back out again that's why you want it to hold it level while you're doing that and that's the technique you're going to implement on the other side make sure it's high enough that it's not intrusive enough and getting the right amount of airflow consistently through as much of the cooler as possible that's your objective here okay then we go to the opposing side and just do the same thing on the other side I'm working in the darkness right now so bear with me I'm gonna go by feeling here
Come on, baby, let's go. I keep touching the, uh, so I'll show you something in a second. And I keep touching something with fear because anything that sort of you prod or probe, you want to double check that you didn't break it, you know what I mean? Um, that's what, how it works with computers because they cost a lot of money and you have to be very fragile, gentle in certain applications and tasks and other tasks you don't have to be, but you have to know the correct technique, frankly, okay? Because you have to be quite forceful. Okay, see that over there? That's your, that's my BIOS little um, speaker. You don't always have them with these. Okay, sometimes you have to buy them for like 230, you know what I mean? Um, other times you've got codes and whatnot. But uh, every time I keep working on stuff, I touch that and I'm thinking I'm touching one of these. And these uh, break very easily. In fact, if, if you feel like you ever see any which are bent, get some advice first. Don't touch them, okay? Uh, don't try to bend them back. That might have been that way from manufacturing. You may be unbending them enough to break them as well. So be very, very careful. Watch out, don't touch transistors. Fuck, I forgot what they were called. Wasn't it? Mental break, yeah, you need a short break. Huh? Okay, so next thing's next. I am going to connect up the additional what I might do is tidy this up just a little bit first. So we'll shorten it down for future sake. Okay, so the grooves, I apologize. I have to be conscious of if you guys can see. The grooves here will line up with the wall over here. So that wall will go into the groove there. The other side is flush, okay? That's a way of knowing how to connect your CPU header to your CPU fan. And just make sure it's lined up. There is four pins in this case, okay, for PWN uh, connection, um, which uh, enables you to control it on the BIOS level, okay? Um, if it was a DC connection, they, the fans would be only able to run at 100%, which is better than 50%, frankly. But yeah, control is always good. Unfortunately, this motherboard, I think from memory, looking at the BIOS um, manual, uh, those control functions for older ones, they were like 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent sort of thing, as opposed to nowadays where you've literally got a graph and you can move it to exactly the spot and this type of steepness of incline or decline regarding the way the fan curvature works um, can be set by yourself on that BIOS level, which is awesome because the CPU then knows how to act regarding the heat that it gets to and at what level the fan should be working um, respectfully. And yeah, you don't have to worry about getting into your computer and having extra software running in the background. So if you can do that, consider that people, consider it definitely. Okay, so now at this stage, what we find ourselves with is a completed motherboard that's ready to be put into our case. Um, just to double check, I'm going to just lift it. Don't do that. No, you actually can regarding coolers like this. They're so beefy. If you've connected it properly, everything's going to be fine. Don't flop it around like a fool. And go, ah, I can do that with my cooler because you will probably break it then. But uh, within confines of reason, okay, people. So we are ready to rock and roll. I'm going to double check if at all the uh, RAM, which I can touch, is again just sort of flush 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 nothing just make sure everything is completely flush everything's connected on double check that double check this 
there's movement there, there's movement there. Um, double check this is ready to go to be hidden in a position. Yes, I'm happy with that. Um, you can see from this side, for example, you won't see the actual cabling. Do you get me? Even if you go to here and then by then I'm going to tuck it to there. Do you get me? So you're not going to see that. Okay. So it's going to be a very um, unorthodox build because it's got heat sinks on one ram it's got green ram on the other no herb of mustard at the moment um at the moment at the very least we might get there we might not we'll see what happens um i got some i got some uh i might have some gems or some not so gemmy looking things um in the closet coming out sooner rather than later we'll just see how we roll but um i'll explain that within about two and a half minutes guys so let's continue on with the next stage of our build move that to a safe location and i'm gonna have a five minute break this next, next stage is gonna be finicky Okay, everyone, I am starting to sweat. Yikes, that's what she said. Ooh, ooh. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Anyway, again, just as a reminder, my name is Robbie Astro, and welcome back to Robbie Tech. We've got the case out finally, but before that, please smash that like button if you're here and you're enjoying the content. If you're finding it at all helpful, if it's inspiring you, if it's made you think about building in another way, shape or form, and uh, and also hit that subscribe button as well i greatly appreciate all the generosity people thank you very much i am very very humbled by everyone's support and it just motivates me to produce more content such as this okay so we've got ourselves a case i got mates rates from it i'm going to be brutally honest mates rates um there are some you know issues with the case in general it's an old antique case it's a full-size atx case pretty pretty nifty pretty decent i've already taken the luxury of installing some fans that were pre-existing in the case just double checking we've got a couple of intakes over here we've got one uh that's sort of like a makeshift fan that's been sort of jerry jerry rigged something similar like this essentially and well, I'll flip it around like because it's right at the moment it's not completely even um, that's going to have to be maybe even stuck into place frankly but because it's obsolete regarding the usage of CD drives and stuff like that you can sometimes get yourself a harness like that insert it will have a fan but then it'll also have the luxury for conversion to 3.5 inch hard drive base and or two and a half inch trays inserts okay so that's really really cool they used to be cheap i don't know they still are this day and age i'll turn this around and voila we've got a side window pipe panel as well so we're going to make sure that we do a clean build because it's going to be visible to everyone not too shabby a case for ten dollars it is a little bit on the thin side in some parts it, it does provide space for a 240 mil aio cooler as well so that's really nifty um especially if you're going down that aio path something like this will be awesome because you can get that cooler as well and have it ready to rock and roll with in your primo build okay so let's take the let's take the uh side panel off and for good measure we'll take the other side panel off as well which is a little bit more finicky this one there we go look at that no wobble that's real metal she's heavy as well that's what she said <laughs> no definitely not okay so let us let us start off with a quick tour and the problems with this ten dollar case is even though it had some fans the fans are mix match they're not the same in use and there's uh one two three coarser fans okay and there is a antique fan on the top there so 
I don't know exactly what's going on where the other Antec fans went, but I'm grateful that these fans, from my understanding, all work, um, yet to be tested, and we'll find out. But, but I trust my mate's rates and my mate at the same time, so as a result, it should hopefully be fine. Hello, everybody. Now, we've got one more fan to install and it's the intake fan so i'll give you a closer look here these are static old old school corsa fans from my understanding they do have a very very long cord i've got it wrapped around here so that i can have as middle minimal uh cord fuss in a location that's going to be tricky to hide a cord from because it's going to be the outtake fan okay and it's going to essentially push air out of the case or suck air out of the case, okay? So what I'm going to try to do is keep that cord nice and tight, loosen it and let it go down one side like that. It's a very long cord. It's still tucked around here. Put that on the back there, okay? And then that's going to subsequently come down to that fan header that's completely visible in the center of the... Uh, motherboard okay that's the closest one so that's what we're going to utilize what i'm going to have to then do is we're going to put the graphics card on that part there slide it around into the little little spot where a cord can go past the graphics card okay where it's connected and it's essentially going to be completely hidden from the eye crossing our fingers if we're job well done on top of this we've got our two fans, our two Corsa fans, bottom side intake and our antique fan. I'm gonna push, position this back into place ever so slightly here. Our antique fan is quite unique in that it's a DC control fan. It also runs on a Molex, okay? So a Molex connection. So that's gonna have to, you're gonna have to make sure you have Molex connections available if you're running old Molex fans. I don't know where's the visor, it's probably a more secure connection using a SATA and or fan header. You know, fan headers will give you the luxury of being able to generally speak and control the fan speeds as well. SATA connections may allow for as well if you've if one gets jerry to the actual motherboard itself, okay, but, and or the uh, hub that you might be using is essentially able to be connected say by USB or something like that and can also run a signal to the motherboard okay so apart from that it's actually got a little button here which when you look closer says low medium high that's for your fan speed so we're going to chuck it on medium for the time being if it's too loud we'll put it on low because it's a top intake fan that's fine and generally i want the cooler air coming in from the bottom okay so you know the top can be a little slower especially if there's too much noise depending on how much positive or negative airflow is actually occurring in the case we can adjust it accordingly it's not a bad fan in actual fact these antique fans back in the day were from my understanding rather decent as well okay so that's why that high is actually quite powerful okay um especially when it came to some of their 200 mil fans when 200 mil fans weren't popular if you looked at the amount of air they pushed and get what the cubic metric uh, measurement the measurement is for air being pushed okay because mass wasn't my strong suit frankly you know but what what they pushed was twice to three times the amount of the 200 mil fans today okay as an equivalent do i have an example let me just flick my then bam, I've got the biggest, fastest fan ever created known to man, at least on a consumer level, that's generally speaking, okay? So this fan is gonna cut your fingers off, frankly, but it doesn't make that much more noise. And again, it's a DC powered fan, you can see over here, it's got a little clip and on and on and off. I actually use it because it actually stands quite upright very easily for when I'm overclocking things and I've got an open board, okay? So then I'll use it over the PCBs, whatnot, on old school sort of overclocks and that. If I'm trying to go really high, you know? Again, it's a Mollus connection, okay? But if you look at how, if you look at that this Antec 200 
millimeter fan and you look at the best performing fans per se it does say negative of the molex connection itself is is a negative but it does specify that these was one of if not the one that moved the most air it was louder but as a 200 mil fan generally speaking they are quieter lower rpm as a result uh what you end up getting is very quiet operation but you have to be aware sometimes i actually took them out of my h500m case in that regards and i replaced the i replaced them by three obsolete be quiet fans i had available that were high current airflow 120s so i've got a conventional approach of one three 120s because i'm prefer the airflow coming from those than i did from the gradual amount and in general if you have good pressure in the case those two 200 mil fans are going to provide that positive pressure to the um, exhaust itself that it's sufficient regardless of the fact that it doesn't feel like it they're moving anything they're continuously moving something okay but psychologically speaking i like to feel the uh, whoosh you know as a result and that's why i've got three 120s instead of a two 200s okay guys so now what we've got here is i've already got the uh power supply installed as well all it took was four screws uh, on the back side of it that just line up with the corresponding holes make sure it's on the zero zero means for not circuit closed or open in that regard sorry but circuit closed okay so that's what essentially it means it means it's off so zero doesn't mean everything's connected it means everything is off okay the little tick itself means it's on put it on the zero okay people put it on the zero before you plug anything in okay it saves the hassle of it anything getting shorted prematurely okay prematurely lol <laughs> okay from there on in you want to look at cable management so hopefully we can get a good view on this side over here looking at cable management you want to run everything through so from the front port over here the front port by the way has two usb 3 ports uh two usb 2.0 ports and i believe there's an on button up here there's a reset button as well as your auxiliary connections and whatnot for your audio now I've had that and I've got it running through here. Subsequently, I know where everything is positioned on the board regarding this. I did explain this at the beginning as well. So your USB 2.0 and we don't have a 3.0 connection, but I'll, I'll show you guys a better view in a second when we're getting it into the mother, when we're getting the motherboard in the case. The USB 3 point connection on this front IO in that regards has the ability to connect to 2.0 as well because it's got a jerry-rigged 2.0 outtake in case okay surprisingly even newer cases today don't you don't get the luxury of that you have all 3.0 connections so there might be four and on those motherboards you might only have one spot for a 3.0 which means two usb headers on the front plate of your case rendered useless I have that with a $350 case currently. You want to start off and continue with your management, managerial, cable managerial skills. Essentially, what I've got traversing up here from the power supply on this side, okay? So the power supply is connected here. I will flip it around in a second's time to give you guys a better look. But essentially, you have to think ahead as you're threading things through. And this is gonna to go to the ATX uh, 26 pin. So I'll get it to peek its head out around the side there, you can see, and that's roughly where it's connected on the marble board. This is how I'm working. I'm working back to front today because it's a little bit unconventional. Usually you put the marble board in and then deal with the cables. Sometimes if you think ahead, you don't have as much of a mess to begin with, okay? To deal with at the end, okay? It's simple, it's simple logic, okay? Sometimes Sometimes people just have to think different sometimes people think differently than you and it's a weird thing isn't it but you know as long as you get to the same place and you put you sort of essentially buy by the same principles then it's generally socially accepted pardon the uh, technicalities there social acceptance you know socially acceptable okay so as you can see a better look on this side for the smart power 650 watt power supply again that was about 40 dollars from my understanding i got that for at the time nowadays something equivalent i would try to second hand always 
it's debate okay it's debate because people try to sell it for the price that's supposedly worth new to understand generally speaking and this is how it should be applied as soon as you take the computer outside that computer store it has dropped in value there's something newer and greater coming just around the corner in three months time it has definitely depreciated this is how it always worked for computers nowadays for a second they all went up amazing okay so on top of this is a non-modular power supply meaning that the cables are all connected to the power supply and at least at the very least means second hand wise you've got all the cables you don't have to worry too about it problem is it's going to be very very messy this is the mess i'll be left with i'll have to tuck that away somewhere again with this case on the other hand it's old school in that sense plenty of space it's very very good for its age and still user friendly today but unfortunately there's a lot of space over here rather than behind there to hide this mess frankly you know what i mean there's no shroud or anything like that i guess i could make one if i so desired they would give the case another renaissance you know i look completely different how much effort i'm going to do into that is another story what your budget is is another story remember we're trying to keep costs down you're going to you're going to have a case that might be a lot messier than this and might not be just make sure there's enough space for a few fans two three intake fans one exhaust top side more exhaust if possible depending on how it is generally look for a second hand atx case if you can it'll give you the best flexibility regarding anything especially if you need to keep it for a little longer because you're holding out for that really really shiny blingy case and you've only got enough for your 3070 and your 5700x or something you know what i mean and it's a lot of fun it just reinforces and teaches you building techniques and whatnot because you continuously have to do it all over again you know but you're just technically upgrading in steps rather than bulk buying all at once and losing all that money at the same time you know it's probably more worthwhile than paying something off over a period of time i don't know if lay by still exists or whatnot you know what i mean but it's more rewarding because you actually got the items coming in and you can work with them if you're smart people this is what you, how you can work okay so on a side note we've already got the uh, molex connection connected to the molex over here for the top side fan so that's really that's all done on top of that we've got our front side essentially buttons and headers and leds and whatnot that's all threaded and that will go to the bottom side of the motherboard like shown previously before okay that's why i gave you guys a nice little tour i'm just going to thread that to the side here so it doesn't get in the way and doesn't get lost okay maybe not just there maybe just a little further down because i know i'm going to put something in the center here and that's our ssd in a second's time but before we do that i will show you guys so here's um here's that 3.0 usb and here's that extra part that's coming off the side of it i don't know if you can see that exactly i'll put my hand behind it you'll get a better view you might have to zoom in i'm looking at a small screen currently so i think you can see that if it's fully blown on your desktop um, but it, that will enable that 3.0 header to still be used uh, unfortunately only at 2.0 speed so here's your usb 3 and like mentioned previously you've got your usb 2.0 over here so it can enable you to not have it made redundant and useless so you do at least get the 2.0 capabilities we did have plenty of 2.0 ports before that i showed you as as a round guide of the board itself so we've got that and we've got the other one over here as well that's good we're going to keep it down low we've got to thread it through already yo and as a result now you know the hd audio connection that will go all the way to the bottom left and subsequently can be all kept neatly here ready to rock and roll with once we get our motherboard in now essentially i'm going to have to work unconventionally so that you guys can have a better visual but I'm sure about your standoffs are in and in the applicable corresponding places understand that in modern motherboards uh modern cases beg your pardon that center standoff might be a little bit tricky a little bit iffy a little bit different it's because sometimes it's your support mother standoff first where you press that motherboard in and then because of that you don't necessarily have a proper screw it's a little bit iffy or different uh, depending on manufacturer or maker of the case itself okay so that's something to consider when you're wondering what's going on you might not actually be able to screw a screw in there or if you do you might not be able to unscrew it frankly so be vigilant people okay so we've got all our standoffs in place as well also i've got this 
This is the most tricky part, especially with a big cooler, okay? This is why the intake fan hasn't been placed into place just yet. I wanna give my hand as much space as I can to get this 8-pin CPU connection to the 8-pin CPU connection on the motherboard to power that motherboard. So um, that's very difficult to get to when you have everything in there at once, okay? So thinking ahead just that little bit will enable you to not play that tricky mind game um, with the case where who's your master sort of thing, you know? Anyway, my name's Robbie Astro. Thank you for joining me at Robbie Tech. Please hit the like and or subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. And let's continue on, people. I haven't got the most space in this room, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this SSD in that's already ready on one of these slide provided that it's got an also in a data sort of uh, holder as well, which I've had lying about. Um, it's gonna just make it a bit more rigid because these aren't actually part of this case. That was the thing that, that the, uh, one of the catches with this case as well um, as mates rates and it didn't cost me too much I got as much as probably the metals worth in that regards you know what I mean um, it's because it has nothing to hold its hard drive base you know and it's got so many of them missing frankly you know what I mean so yeah and I was missing this part here luckily um, we both found a couple of these similar pieces lying about because we're both computer enthusiasts in that regards, okay? So, if you're missing this essentially, it's not the end of the world. Understand that this is your temporary build, so don't freak out, it's not the end of the world. Make sure you've got a couple of intakes on the bottom, okay? And you've just got an exhaust, you should be fine, okay? Even then, you know, if you don't have ones on the top there, that's fine, hot air rises regarding that. You just want that cooler to be getting air into it, okay, specifically, okay? And exhausted as well, not hanging around there. So it's as simple as that, guys, okay? See what I mean by fiddly? That's why I added a bit more rigidity. I like saying that virginity to it because this has got to be vigited and there I finally worked out a way that I could sort of lock it in place if you you always want your your drives to be permanently sort of locked regardless you don't want to move in about sometimes disconnect drives can cause corruption and whatnot reconnects you need that you know if you're booting off it you're not going to be able to get into your operating system there we go that's good and it's got about a couple of kilos worth of pressure if you angle if you don't angle it the wrong way so that's that's in and that's a sata connection so we've got i'll show you guys over here we've got that sata connection over here and we're going to plug that in subsequently probably right now why not then I'll tuck this back cord into the bottom lip over here. So into the bottom lip over here, I'll tuck it in. And that way I'll be able to close this subsequently later on very easily. Okay, this side over here, this bird's nest of stuff, these non-modular cables that are required to stay on the power supply, I will probably bundle up for the time being just not with 15 zip ties, but I will bundle it up so tight that it'll be just compressed in the corner there. And make sure you don't bend your cords to 90 degrees angles. Always have clean curls and whatnot if you can manage to do so, because you will damage those cords. They will fray in some way, shape or form, and you may lose some form of, there may be an issue with them in the long run, okay? You may not notice it at the beginning, but it will happen eventually. Trust me, it's happened to me. Okay, so now we're in a great position that I'm going to turn her over. Hopefully, I'm, I'm going to reset up the camera, make sure it's in a position that you guys can at least see inside and see the struggles I have with it regarding uh, putting everything on. And we'll continue further with the build. I'm just going to double check here. As I put this down, there's... That's all fine. That's going to come around there. That'll be fine there. I can probably, probably almost get away with putting the lid back on the back side here. As you guys can see, I've got all that cable management already ready to roll here. So I can probably get almost on, on the stage. Just That's just tucked in over here. I've got the CPU power coming back there. I can't really do anything more with it. It just manages to reach, luckily. Luckily, guys, otherwise we would have been up creek. Next level, people. Okay, I'm back. So next thing's next. 
we're going to grab our IO shield. It's a good time to put it in now or never, frankly. Okay, so you orientate yourself to which way it's going to be set up on the board. So our speak, our audio comp um, plugs will be facing bottom side towards close towards the graphics card and whatnot. So in our case, so I'll just pop it in. You pop it in from inside to out. Essentially, you're going to pop it in. It's got some grooves here, which you want to center it around evenly. And then you'll probably on one side, latch it onto the grooves. I'd say it would be the easiest approach. I'll start from top side, get both grooves with two fingers, go to bottom side here, and you're gonna hear a click and it's done. That's how easy it is dealing with IO shields. Now it's time for our motherboard. Okay, so I'm gonna lift it up from the cooler itself. Watch out for the fans. Very, very heavy. Very, very heavy people. I'd say it's about four or five kilos or something easily. Okay, so I'm going to position it in. I'm gonna, this is why people suggest not putting stuff in first is because they can get in the way. You wanna have a clean sort of a slate. I'm sort of a little more experienced. I know what to, to expect regarding at least this case. There isn't much RG bargy mess as well. So I've got everything out the way. I'm slotting it in. I'm gonna slot it a little bit to the side here. I'm gonna prematurely grab this because it's gonna be trickier later on down the track. I'm gonna guide it now into place, um, roughly almost into place. Um, watching the backslide, you don't wanna scrape it against circuitry and whatnot. I'm going to essentially put this CPU, hold it lightly, and it's still going to be tricky. It's almost in place, people. I'm going to, I'm not going to push down on it because, like I said, I might push down on a bit of circuitry until I've lined it up on the stamp, stamp offs correctly. Now, this is where you want to make sure as well with IO shields, there are little lips or little nips or little latches, I'd say. And you want to make sure that they're up correctly and you don't squash them downwards, okay? So sometimes lifting your uh, and angling downwards the motherboard itself will allow you to slot it underneath those stubborn little clips. And then, and only then, do you after you check so you don't bend those so that they get in the way of ports so that you can't access them essentially. And that's another annoying thing. Imagine you can't access your only 3.2 USB header port because you close it, you're gonna to have to pull everything out and start again. <laughs> so, by the way, if you're enjoying some of my, my uh, uh, aggressively charged uh, tips, because uh, it's getting hot in here, people, and I'm going to start to sweat if I don't get this build finished, then please hit the like button. Please subscribe. I appreciate it all. At Robbie Tech, we love everyone. And because of that, yeah, let's go. Let's keep going. Let's move and press forward. I will now push that CPU into place. It should latch in. Um, otherwise, I'm going to double check. If I don't hear it, click. I'm going to have to check what's going on. Another easy way of checking is you run your fingers. If it's even, okay, then you run your fingers on the side and almost with a fingernail, you just have to make sure that it's flushed on that side as well so you know it's pushed down completely in. It seems like it is, people. Everything's lining up. Okay, it's time for some screwage. I've got some screws over here. They should do the trick once I find them because they're everywhere. So you want to make sure that you screw everyone down. I've I've already screwed the center back top one. It's, it's the hardest one to screw down. And then we're going to screw every other one down subsequently as, as a result now as well. So we need eight more. Remember that little tip when it comes to the center one, that's another way of lining up your board. If you do so, you can borderline work on it vertically. I would never recommend working on the board vertically per se, but it's something that sometimes it has to be done as a content creator. There's no other way of actually showing what the hell is going on. 
Let's go. Hold on, Magnet. Yeah, it's all it's all slightly off kilter. Secondhand parts, guys. Secondhand parts. We've got a, like a saying down here from a door to a wheel to a bumper bar. Then you pick the parts for the parts you need, from my understanding. And they call it pick a part, not parts direct or anything like that. You know. Okay. Seventh one and eighth. Or should I say eighth now? We need one more screw. I bug it up. And counting my screws correctly, people. I got one screw loose. That's Robbie Astral, by the way. Thank you for joining me at Robbie Tech. Let's go, people. Oh no, they're all in. I partner partner. I didn't I didn't even notice that. I'm sorry. I'm gonna double check that CPU. Um, power is connected correctly. I no harm in double triple checking anything ever. Okay, so we're pretty much done with this in that regard. Now it's time to give you guys a better view. So let's make me quickly check if it is the case. So I'm doing the best I can regarding the cameras I've got people to give you the best eye view as we connect everything up subsequently. So next thing's next, I'm going to connect the ATX connection. I'm going to lift it up slightly, pull it, make sure it's got all the slack connected. I know the paths, I know the path it's going. So because of that, I can play it this way. And it's in. Next things next, we'll start off with the audio. So back into that audio header, please refer back. If you're using the same motherboard, I pointed to it exactly at the start. Just have a look in the timestamps provided and you won't be steered wrong. USB one, make sure the USB connections, they always line up. There's always one pin missing to the bottom side and bang it goes in with usb3 on the other hand be extremely vigilant there's a lot of very frail small pins you want to watch out it's got a generally speaking a clip um, in the center of that connection to the pins itself you just have to line that connection up essentially and you should be golden okay we got that in next things next I've got a couple of fans from the front intakes, um, which are ready to rock and roll with. And we've got the two headers just over here. So it's nice to know if top side, bottom side, if you're plugging it to two and three, you can be aware of which one you're controlling in the BIOS regarding its speeds. I'm gonna not be too fast here in this sense. I'm just gonna plug both in because I'm gonna have both of those fans more than likely working on the same profile speed. Top one on the other hand, is a DC one, a DC connection as mentioned. And because of that, we've got it on that medium setting. Now, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to get one extra cable before we connect the uh, front panel connections themselves. So bear with me one uno momento, or mon momento is your SATA or SATA cable. This is for SATA 2 in that sense, but that's still plenty of bandwidth to handle an SSD. Oh no, I think it's actually SATA 3, I beg your pardon. 6 gigabits a second transfers. Okay, so we'll pop that aside there. And where am I going to connect it? Um, have a look at the connections. If you're really fiddly or really pedantic, should I say, then you might want to put it um, your boot drive in one correspondingly. Refer to the manual then. You'll see that I've got six connections there plus a seven SATA connection. That seven one is to be used last and it's for a different purpose. In that case, if you're interested, have a look at the X58 Pro motherboard manual and go to the SATA connections and you'll see exactly what it refers to. It's a good way for you to perhaps brush up and learn to search for a manual itself and to then subsequently read into it itself. It's a simple thing. Write it in the comments if you're interested and you find the answer out. 
that process should realistically take you about three minutes if you know what you are doing. So I put in the top one before, so I'm going to put in the bottom one. I'm pretty sure one was one. No, one was second one. It was actually one to one to three to four to five to six to seven. One more. I think it was, but I'm just weird like that. It's not going to make a difference when there's only one SSD in this case. Uh, but if you have a lot of drives and they're all similar in nature, you might you know they might be they might it might look a little bit more confusing so knowing where you pop them physically to the numbers corresponding to the ports then it's going to make things easier once you're setting things up in the bios itself so back to here it goes and now to the ssd i connect and we've both got sata power and we've also got data power okay let's go people okay when connecting the uh small connections uh to the left or the right above or depending on how you're looking at it um to the front panel itself the reset switch the power switch etc the power leds LED, H, hdd leds um you sort of want to work from top to bottom or bottom to top depending on how you go you might not you just want to be logical and not restrict the access to the next set of pins okay so working a horizontal line call in coordination to yourself across and then you have i'll have the back ones done and then i can still see the front ones because it does get quite fiddly this is again where you go and look at your manual specifically and as a result you will be able to connect these up correspondingly there is a positive and negative on the power led it's something to be cautious of you don't want to fry it or anything like that sometimes some of these it doesn't make a difference which way you pop them in i still always like to pop like you can put the switch in the opposing way and it will still work but um, it's also something to do with also if a little nifty trick is if for example your power switch stops working and you've got a reset switch disconnect the reset switch because it's borderline obsolete in many fashions and connect that power switch onto the reset switch connection it will drive that power switch with power the cool thing about this motherboard is it's remember got that power switch on it physically itself which is a convenient thing for for many reasons that we'll get into perhaps in part two blue is the furthest one yikes almost almost fried it guys and generally speaking there's one additional switch that is not utilized and that will give you a guide as to the coordination of the switches themselves in reference to the diagram that you might be looking at in your manual per se i'm starting to sweat people it's getting hot in here okay there we go now it's all in and you can just sort of grab them all together and squish them down and you know that there is gonna be fireworks potentially if you did it wrong okay so just to round out we've got our front panel connections all done we've got our two usb slash three slash two two to two two done and then we've got also our reset switch here just to confuse us which i was pointing to our hd audio okay we've got all our screws in as well we've got our atx connection in we've got our sata connection into the only drive that we're currently using as the boot drive that ssd will provide adequate performance which i neglected to mention earlier uh proficiently enough that it will provide a boost to this type of system had you been using a mechanical drive okay last intake fan so how's this going to be done very simply where'd that intake fan go hey where'd you put my intake fan so again we've got our little technique of this long ass cable being wrapped around here and as a result, then make sure that the intake slash the good side and the bad side is facing outwards of the PC. And over there, you'll get a better view on the other camera. Then essentially line it up in corresponding place and have your screws ready, which I don't. So we're going to get that next ready to rock and roll with. This is where sometimes it's good to have two hands if you're doing it with a friend or a brother or something or a mother, father, sister, lover, then um, perhaps not a lover because 
you might not love each other afterwards. You still have to get through the BIOS clearances and whatnot, checks and balances. So, you know, we're almost in the home stretch, but it depends on how you look at it, peeps. Okay, I need four screws for the fans, please. Four screws. I need four screws, please. Please give me four screws. Four screws for Christmas. Christmas time for screws. Because it's holiday and you want to do something, you're going to build computers, true? I promise people we're almost finished the unconventional conventional way of building a computer exactly the same just front to back back to front used to last place finally we're gaining some space if I don't get the shakes all right let's go I do need a beverage it's going to be approximately 30 degrees Celsius outside meaning this room is starting to bake with a couple of computers okay so firm rotations these fan screws you want to make sure that you do not over rotate them it's what causes the fan sometimes to warp vibration to occur damages the fans as well so we got one in enough that it's firm enough to hold it in place but not to over tighten the fan and or not or not completely and we'll put the diagonal on Oh, we almost lost the whole computer. Did you notice that? I apologize for that. That is that is a true blooper reel uh, maker. And that's because I'm trying to keep... The, I'm doing it for you, essentially. Um, I'm trying to keep the table wide and clean, everything light. Uh, so there's a contrast and you can visibly see everything. And because of that, I haven't got the actual work mat on it. A full-size work mat. Would you believe? How nice of me. Wrecking the whole video by trying to provide you with a video what I'm literally starting to swear people this is how hard computer building is at times it will it will crush your spirits if it doesn't go right so make sure you take your time it can if it takes you all day it takes you all day it's better than having to lose all that bloody pay and be told that you did it the wrong way bad luck bye bye okay that's in there Give that little fan a spin for good measure. Make sure everything's fine. It seems that way. Now, we're going to drop that back down like so. Give you a view. You can see that I've got the cable itself coming through here. I'm going to get any slack. It's been a long day, people. A long day that you go and you work back to front and guess what? What you can't do is that last thing, generally speaking. Why? Because you're getting tired, you know. Your, you know, your work ethic might still be up, but unfortunately, you know, your productivity starts to diminish over time. That's called a work day and a work week. And what this means is that I can't connect fans up. The one thing you probably all started with, frankly, they gave you the confidence to consider a build. Um, I, on the other hand, <laughs> can't do it. Perhaps go the back to front. Like I said, it'll be an easy mistake to fix afterwards rather than taking the whole thing apart again. So we got that in finally. Now we've got one more thing to connect up, frankly. And what's that? What's that, may you ask? The graphics card. So in this case, the 1050 Ti OC 4 gigabyte edition. Okay, so essentially you've got three slots there. As The Verge says, all of those will accept the graphics card. It will work great. Unfortunately, we've got the top slot available first. So we're going to use that top slot for the time 16 maximum bandwidth experience. Um, Greg Salzabar, on the other hand, tried to correct The Verge at one stage. Unfortunately, his correction and rendition of his understanding of the PCIe lanes was incorrect as well so it was rather amusing to myself the correction was laughing at and he didn't actually elaborate much because he had must have had a mental blank at the time it happens with us his videos don't go on for we started this today at 
9 o'clock in the morning, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Understand that I'm trying to teach you at the same time. That's something I'm not used to, but it's serious shit when you mess with someone's lives. Everybody's life matters and they all crumbled this poor streamer's life from the verge and broke him. Broke his confidence, broke his ability to work in the industry and all because of that. The irony is Greg then is getting sued and he tries to throw it back at people and you know what I mean? But I don't know, man. I, I think he needs a big kick up the backside and a wash of uh, soap in his mouth regardless of the fact that his choice of words aren't vulgar. There's plenty of vulgarity about it, frankly, and acid with a lot of some, some of these people I've noticed. Great people in general, but it's just like saying, you know, I'm not saying this is the case, but... You know, anyway, let's get this in the place. Let's put the politics aside, people. I'm sure I could learn a lot from Greg Franklin and all his SSD hard drive, um, what, what not. He could elaborate on how I could improve my videos as well. For further and other videos, people, by the way, on a lighter note, please hit the like button, please subscribe. There's plenty of content available that's starting to accumulate on the channel as I find my craft of editing. A lot of editors come and start building computers for the first time. I see the mistakes they made. It's quite hilarious. I don't, I don't, you know, hold them accountable to, um, in that regards. But, you know, some people like making videos about it. On the other hand, um, you know, the hypocrites, I will, I will push back at them and go, oh, well, hang on a minute, you can't do that. So essentially top line, line it up with the two holes, pop it in. There's two little grooves on the side there that hold it to the side, back side of the cat. Um, make sure that they're slotted in, push down firmly. You should hear a click. We didn't hear a click in this time because it's an older type board. It's just sort of more like a little latch there that happens, but it's in firm. And we're gonna get our two screws ready to rock and roll with. Uno original screw, due original screw, uno, due, tre, and quattro, mi chiamo Rob, bless, like, and follow, subscribe, socials in the bottom. And last screw, guys. Don't ever say it out loud, please. Trust me. Well, the last item you're doing, don't ever say it out loud. It just won't go. Okay, got that. Okay. And then we're done and moving on to part two. Uh, and if you've uh, enjoyed what you've watch so far found it interesting insightful in any way shape or form please hit that like button my name is robbie ash we appreciate all the follows support subscribes socials in the bottom corner timestamps will take you to relevant sections if you need to go backwards and forwards and again grateful for everybody's support it's a free way to show your love and thank you all um i'll be back in a moment with the final conclusion and power up crossing our fingers Okay, people, so the moment of truth has arrived. Or in actual fact, let us flick that master switch for the PC Master Race support group. You know, by the way, uh, if you like what you've been hearing today, it's starting to sweat in here, I apologize. Uh, we've got a Facebook group uh, called PC Hardware and Builds and everyone's welcome currently. We've got a lot of Australian members. Um, I believe if it's not open, it will be open to all public in the next couple of days. Um, troubleshooting, hardware, builds, tech advice, tech news, tech memes, tech jokes, tech gifs, everything tech related. Um, regarding specifically PC builds and hardware, you can showcase your builds, you can ask questions about them. PC hardware and builds on Facebook. Apart from that, please, uh, we've got the socials down at the bottom. If you liked at all or found anything interesting or insightful enough to get you to stay to this level, then please hit that like button. 
please subscribe. I appreciate all the effort. I appreciate everybody's generosity and support. It's a free way for you to show your support for Robbie Tech. And after all, it gives me the ammunition then to provide videos of this caliber at the very least. And now we're at the nitty gritty end. So at the moment of truth, we're gonna turn it on for the first time. It might have to train itself. It might take a bit. It might restart, it might recycle, it might reboot. Uh, it may not start at all, um, it may be completely fine. We'll go into the BIOS, we'll go into, if it's fine, we'll go straight into Windows, start getting the updates, and then I'll disconnect, update everything, get everything ready to t for testing on standard before we, up, uh, before we then show how to do the overclock. And then with that said, we shall then go back and show the benchmarks and whatnot, or oh, before and after. So, so we've got that on. Power should hopefully come to the DVI port first. It might take a second to recognize, and if power is connected right, no, it's not, because one more thing, the switch. We've got a light there, we'll give it two seconds. A little nervous, never know what happens. Let's when it's, when it's the first switch especially when I've done so much change to the RAM and everything. Okay, let's hit delete. We've got, we've got fanage, we've got front fans. We can see all three fans are working. So it's a blue fan at the front there. That's nice. It might contour the, we've got BIOS active, delete time, CMOS settings wrong, date time not set, press F1 to run setup, F2 to load default values and continue. We'll go to setup just to make sure everything is fine for the time being, okay. <sighs> HW monitor, CPU temperature from the onset is only at 23, so it hasn't spiked or anything like that. 23 degrees is really, really good for this chip at the moment, just um, on the coolness side of things. It's barely working, but it is working. We've got these, and these fans are actually, I think, better than the ones I've got in my 3900 XT system, frankly, these coarser fans. Unfortunately, they're not um, addressable RGB. Um, they're just they're just wide in that sense. So um, You can see system fan one speed system fan two speed uh, CPU fan speed and we can um, IO temperatures at 50 that's about standard it, it does get it quite toasty, but CPU V core essentially is CPU fans target we can change that options uh, fan target uh, great rain power. Okay, load optimized defaults, advanced BIOS settings, full screen logo enabled. I'm going to disable the full screen logo. Quick booting enabled, boot up number log ED, one format primary graphics adapter, PCIe. We've got graphics in that side. PC, PCIe latency timer. We'll leave it on default. CPU feature set enable threading. Function enabled, execute bit support, disabled CIE enabled. So we'll disable CIE support and all this other stuff, over speed protection and that. Uh, when we're overclocking, chipset feature, uh, boot sequence, so we'll make sure that. So it's, it seems to think that there's a 2.2 terabyte infinity drive, that's always odd, so I'm gonna disable that. And it's got another one, which I'm gonna disable that. And boot from other devices, we can say yes. But for the time being, we'll just say no, because we don't need it. So I don't want someone doing something without asking me first. So it's happened in the past. Trusted computing, we'll leave that. Boot sequence, Samsung. Um, standard CMOS features. So it's in SSDs in SS in SATA 3. So I put in the wrong slot, the back one was SATA 1. I would, that would annoy the hell out of me um, for a little bit. So, date time, we'll set that up correctly. So, the date is the 2nd of the 5th, isn't it? 2021. And the time is... What's the time, people? Uh, it's 3.30 p.m. on the dot. So, I've got a lot of work with me. So, I've got a visitor coming as well around 6. Uh, so... It's going to be on the 15 axes, 3.30 on the dot. We'll go on to system information, just run through everything. So i7 CPU 950 at 3.07 gigahertz at the moment, 
core frequency 3.0 codes so we multiply 133 by 23 um, which is giving you that physical memory if it's being read at 18 1800 uh, 18,000 megabytes or your 18 gig is being read um, so that's that is good off the bat let's go to that hard disk Samsung 500 gig obviously that's going to be our boot drive boot sequence we'll go into real quickly Samsung has the boot just verify integrated peripherals this will be the device that gets your world and control enabled then option RAM disabled IEEE -E -E controller we can Disable that for now. Extra rate, i.e., controller. We'll leave that. Actually, on controller enable on chip. ATO devices. Bus master enabled. RAID IDE. That's fine. IO devices. Uh, fine. Via settings. Cell menu is not important for the time being. This is where we're going to be overclocking in the cell menu. Okay. So at the moment, adjust the DRAM frequencies being read at at 1066 we're going to bump that up to about 1600 on these 1366 uh, memory modules so user settings on the other hand um, I don't know like you can't name them in these old things so you have to remember where the safe settings are so we'll, we'll attempt to see what happens with that and maybe I can get an old uh, overclock up um, and start from there and just make sure it's working and show you guys pretty much the steps um, and to tell you to start from a lower amount before you get to that potential overclock. Uh, load file, so deep, load, load, oh, load, save and exit. Save configuration exit, so wait, cancel. User settings, save settings. Press enter, save current setup settings to store. Press enter. Do you want to save current setup settings to be stored? Yes, we'll do it to four. So I'm guessing one or two will be the, the overclock. Uh, and then we want to press enter and load. Do you want to load setup settings from this store, which is four? Yes. And then F10, save configure and changes and exit setup. Yes. And let's see what happens. It should at least get us through to Windows at the very least in default mode, essentially. Not completely default, but We'll definitely be able to increase, you know, RAM speeds and whatnot, and then overclocks as well potentially. Um, we'll just see what's what's going on. So it's it's getting into boot. I haven't got it connected up to Wi-Fi or anything like that. I'm also going to do one other benchmark, and that's uh, do all this without trying to upgrade Windows if possible before then upgrading Windows. So it's going to have to find a driver load vendor DLL fail. Please install VGA driver. Yeah, so it's going to have to be connected up. So I'm going to have to get all the uh, thing out. So that sort of sucks because uh, I've got a feeling that the performance um, on the onset would be uh, would be a lot more. I've got a feeling it'll be better than after the Windows updates. Is is that something dodge going on? Hold on, should be updating a driver now. So it's just updated a driver. It's, it's not enough to do so. Excellent. Okay, so we'll just double check. Um, Cupid HW uh, CPU ID WH monitor um, just for the time being. So it's idling from 40 to 130 watts, where core temperatures are about 38 to 40 degrees. Uh, system fans all running at 100%, and you can hear it how you can hear it. Um, that's the exit of it. Um, there it is, like literally, if I get a piece of paper, it's, it's very, very like I, I'm starting to think I have to put these in that computer to make sure that that 3900 XT is getting proper exhaust securing. So it's ranging from 1600 megahertz to the three mega to the 300 3.07 uh, megahertz. Will it boost to 3.33 is another story. CPU Z 64 shortcut. We'll just have a quick look. Luckily I've got this at so 40, 45 nanometer, 1366 socket LGA. Uh, i7 950 at 130 watts, it's Bloomfield 950 at 3.07. Core speed are variable, so it's not locked in at the moment, which is good. Bus link, then we'll go to main board is fine. We shall see the BIOS version, version 8.15, date the 3rd, 1920. So it's one of the newer ones that were available. Okay, uh, memory wise, um, 18 gigabytes we're getting in triple channel mode. So it's activated the triple channel mode and it's correctly done. The way I explain 
to do it and set it up it, it works it's going to be working great we're just going to have to increase the megahertz so and and the frequencies in that regards the zero frequencies and whatnot to overclock it to its maximum potential the video geforce gdx 1050 ti is being red i'm not going to bench it here actually what we can do do i have it available cinebench windows 64 Cinebench R15. So we'll do an R15 Cinebench run just straight off the bat with you guys before I leave it and probably have to update it because as soon as I try to uh, update, uh, unless I bring the files across, which will be a lot more tedious to do, to do Apex Legends and to do Fortnite, it's going to insist probably if by some stage that I update Windows. So before we do that, I'll do. A, I'll just do a run. It's four cores, eight threads. It's being read at three point oh eight. So understand that I have actually had this system at four point three two gigahertz on the Cinebench R fifteen run. No, yeah, four point three two gigahertz, and we've gotten a essentially a six sixty on it. So we're going to run it on stock and see how it runs. I would be also checking temperatures right now instead of worrying about the score completely. And so it may affect the score slightly. So core temperatures, as it's under low 100%, um, it's using 130 watts, so it's power hungry, but it's at 55, 54 degrees, guys. So 55, 54 degrees, it'll use less in, in the games themselves. It's just how powerful will it be? It'll be based upon how many megahertz we can get and how choppy it's gonna be because of that. You know what I mean? CPU fans ramped up from 600 to 1261. So it's variable in that. It's, it's going pretty fine. Remember there's two fans in there and we've got the other fans raising at 1650. IOH temperatures if I was at 68. Also CPU temperature has been specified there. Specifically it's at 34, but the core temperature is at the 55, 56, 50 mark. 57 has been the highest on core zero. And it's not boosting up higher, but it's not classing me on. It's technically as an AVOX lows R15, but I haven't seen it hit the 3.3, so maybe I haven't got uh, boosts activated completely. Remember there'll be graphics card updates and drivers and whatnot that need to be done with regarding this. But I'm happy with this. It did got it did get a really pathetic score, frankly. 462. Now I understand with overclocking and everything, we should be able to, and I'll tell you right now, get it to 660. So 462 to 660, that's 200 points difference on Cinebench R15. That's that's an extreme amount for a four core, eight core thread uh, processor. It'll be a matter of setting up everything uh, prop away. Oh, Would you like to save your benchmark? Yes. But we'll open it up one more time without updating completely the, we'll run open GL run just without updating the drivers and that. I'll just on the default drivers, we'll see what, what it's kicking at and if it's actually manages to render it and stuff. So there's the open GL slash render run. Hopefully straight off the bat, it, it gives us something reasonable to play with that, you know, on stock. Um, remember 1050 Ti, um, i7, 950 CPU at 3.07 GHz. Currently, we haven't seen a boost to the turbo specified at 3.3 yet. I uh, haven't seen those clocks happen. I should have the monitoring software on background. So this test is almost done in a second. And these are basic uh, uh, tests to, to do, but also, will benchmark essentially more so Apex Legends and then Fortnite Apex Legends is more CPU hungry as well so if you're getting 60 on Apex you'll definitely get 60 plus in Fortnite if you get my drift so this time around on this test we got on the OpenGL run we got 53.63 frames average okay yeah so we got 53.63 frames so we're going to see if we can improve that um, through CPU uh, improvement and also potentially an over a slight overclock. Would you like to say your benchmark? Yes, we'll save it. This file reads, do you want to override the existing file? No, create a new file. No. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll also essentially go to we'll we'll get, we'll get MSI Afterburner in this case, and we'll utilize that a CPU Z. So. Have I got MSI Afterburner? Have I got Crystal Disk Mark real quickly? Okay, I'll get all that ready. MSI Afterburner setup. So we've got Afterburner setup, photo application. So, okay, I'll get Windows completely updated this time. Um, we'll do it legit and we'll see how it, we're essentially asking how it stacks up 
in this day and age. I just wanted to potentially prove something different. So I will plug it in, make sure it's updated guys and get it ready for everything I mentioned regarding the overclocking as well, the benchmarking beforehand. I'll try to sum it up nicely in the rest of the video that's gonna be ahead, whether I'll do a part two slash so part one will be build, part two will be overclocking, part three will be benchmarking, and I'll have it either completely split up or completely split up but uploaded at the same time so you can see everything straight away. And or that's why the overclocking video may help others but they don't necessarily have to know about the other stuff that's going on. So yeah, I'll be back in a second guys. Please uh, like, sub uh, share, subscribe and follow. Facebook as well, at Robbie Tech and also Twitter also, so socials, yeah. I'll make sure they are, they are linked on the page at some stage or other, I'm sure they will be. Okay guys, so we'll be talking soon after I've got this computer a bit more streamlined now. And to update it, a simple process, just plugging it into the internet and you just go to settings and Windows settings, start updating that stuff because it's been a while since this computer's been online. Then we'll go and we'll update the drivers for the graphics cards okay and then we'll go and potentially overclock the graphics card itself to a certain level with MSI Afterburner it's a simple couple of processes you just have to enable a couple of settings and then you just let it go through and do it itself it does a safe overclock for you which it tests it for you it's a simple process get a little bit more performance there then we'll be back um, with the games and then we'll benchmark overclock benchmark again and have our verdict guys on what we got okay so just before we go give you guys a better look i'll, I'll turn this light off just here so it's, you can't really see too much like hold on okay so you can't really see it too much you've got this going on here doesn't look too too like it doesn't look like it's the worst thing in the world you know what i mean but for starters how is it going to perform so far so good it, it's it's snappy okay like you're not seeing files okay so there's there's it from the front okay so the blue button on the side matches the blue it's not too shabby a shame probably having the blue on the bottom or in the center and then white blue white would be nice but we can't do anything about that so guys um, I'll be back sooner rather than later and we'll continue on. Otherwise, you may have to go on to part two of this video, okay, for the next one. Okay, guys? Or skip to the benchmarking straight up if you just don't want to learn how to overclock just yet and you want to see if it actually made a difference. Okay, peace out, guys.